back to another episode of Coffee with Coker, and this is another episode in our Espresso Shot series, uh, the shorter episodes where we hone in on specific topics or address um, specific questions. And this is a little bit of a unique episode here, uh, but we wanted to take an opportunity to um, highlight one of the new uh, members of the Coker team and uh, some of the things that he's doing, which uh, we think are, are interesting enough for us to have a at least have a quick discussion around you know what what he's expecting to do here as well as um some of the things coming down the pipe here in the future that we wanted to put out there for you all um but in this episode we had a kind of a quick conversation with Brant Jewell, who is, um, again, the, one of the newest senior members of the Coker team. He's a senior vice president, and he is over um, an area of expertise that covers physician services or physician enterprise and really all things related to physician practices and um, hospitals that either affiliate with or contract with or directly employ physician groups, which pretty much is, is uh, the, the majority, represents the majority of the, of the uh, hospitals and health systems out there, um, at least have that area on their radar to some degree. And so that's why we thought it'd be relevant to, to highlight Brandt. Um, he brings a lot of um, very valuable experience to Coker, and, um, and there's a lot that we're doing in this area that um, we, thought, we thought it makes, made sense for us to talk a little bit more about what is going on. And what are some of the things that uh, we're seeing and that Brant has seen as it relates to this? So we talk a lot about, um, obviously, physician practices, practice management, those types of things, um, as well as things like clinical integration and uh, value-based reimbursement and um, kind of the, the shift to value-based healthcare. And, um, and, and other kind of things related to that, such as things like MACRA, uh, which we'll talk about more here in the future as well. Um, we also wanted to highlight kind of a, um, or put as a kind of a teaser out there to, to everyone to be looking. Brent's going to be participating in another full episode of Coffee with Coker, um, on the topic of patient access. And obviously that is something that is, is significant for all, uh, physician practices and health systems that, um, uh, operate physician groups or clinically integrated networks or, or really anything on the ambulatory side of the house. And so um, we know there are a lot of things going on in that area and there's, there've been a, there's been a lot of interest and, and questions coming in uh, as it relates to patient access. So um, that'll be an interesting discussion that we have and, and Brant has a lot of experience in that area. So I look forward to having that. And I wanted to mention that to you all so you can be looking for it, but hopefully this is a good um, introduction for you all to Brant and some of the things we do within the physician services or physician enterprise realm. Um, and so, um, and hopefully we'll tee up some, some good, uh, material for future episode. Um, also, as always, I just want to remind you all, please feel free to, um, check us out at coffeewithcoker.com. You can find all the episodes of Coffee with Coker's podcast, uh, there, um, including the espresso shot episodes. And, um, you can also provide feedback directly there, or you can send us email at, an email at feedback at cokergroup.com. If you have any questions or if you have any feedback on anything we've talked about or recommendations for um, topics for us to cover in future episodes, we absolutely welcome your feedback and participation. And, and we hope you all are interested in being engaged with us as we um, cover the topics and, and material that are relevant to this market. Um, also follow us on social media at Coker Group is where you can find us on Twitter. You can also uh, find us on LinkedIn. Just search for Coker Group. But we look forward to um, getting your feedback. Again, we hope you find this informative, kind of unique episode, not our typical thing. But again, we thought it was relevant and uh, we wanted to um, you know, provide more information on Brant and what, what he does. Um, so with that, please enjoy. And we look forward to talking to you on future episodes. All right, welcome. And uh, this episode, as we mentioned in the intro, we have um, it's kind of unique for us, and uh, and it, but it's exciting at the same time because we get to introduce a new member of the Coker team who uh, brings a tremendous amount of value to what we do, but also expanding our capabilities for clients out there. So um, we're really excited to be talking to Brant Jewell. Welcome. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Brant is literally um, hitting the ground running with Coker. And so what we wanted to do is, uh, again, just provide a little bit of background on him and, and his area of expertise and also have a quick discussion on some things, some areas of expertise that he covers and how that's relevant in the marketplace. And then, again, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, one of the things we really want to do here today was um, kind of provide a little bit of teaser for another episode that's going to be coming up here in the next couple of months and uh, talk about that topic for just a minute. And then you know, that would give you guys something to look forward to. Um, so I guess first things first, though, Brant, just give us we want to welcome you, introduce you to our audience here and you know everyone that kind of follows our content. But uh, maybe just give everybody a little quick background on you, your experience and where you came from. Sure. Well, uh, thanks, Mark. I'm you know, thrilled to be here and uh, already very impressed with the Coker team and the breadth of experience and the depth of knowledge. Uh, just seems like a great group of people that I'm excited to be working with. And uh, there just seems to be opportunity across the board for uh, for us to jump in and get started. We're already getting started. So I started in what I'd call true physician practice management consulting and have since deviated and gone back to that uh, multiple times. I spent significant time with the advisory board working in value-based care, positioning organizations to transition from volume to value, uh, in addition to kind of the standard bread and butter process improvement um, and optimizing their management practices. So I'm excited to learn from the Coker team and uh, build on what's already a strong foundation in that area. And I think we can uh, develop some more unique offerings for clients and uh, really provide a lot of value in the market. Yeah, and that that's... Uh... Exactly right. And uh, one of the reasons we're really excited to have you join is because of that experience you bring us because of the things that you've done with your clients out there in the past working with uh, both. And and I this is the distinction, I think, is both, you know, practices that are affiliated or even directly employed by hospitals and health systems, as well as private practices as well. So sure. really covers them. There. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So and maybe that'll kind of dovetail us into talking a little bit about some of the things you're going to be focusing on and looking at as we do that, because the the landscape of the marketplace today is that so much of this stuff comes together. When you think about a hospital or health system employing a group of physicians or running an employed physician network or partnering with them through various other affiliation and alignment models, and then also, aside from the hospital health system environment, again, that private practice model, so many of the things that they're doing, they're different components. And so you can't just confront them, I think, these days from just the standpoint of, oh, this is a you know, finance issue or this is a rev cycle or this is whatever, but it really is all encompassing. So I don't know, maybe just talk for a minute about what are some of the things you're going to be doing as it relates to that. Um, I was lucky enough to start off with a company that felt very strongly about engaging providers mm -hmm. in, in change. And if and if nothing else at this point in, in healthcare, we're, we're going through cultural change. And sure. that's everything from the active you know financial acquisitions and, and transaction world to the things that providers are asked to do in the room with a patient and the motivation to keep patients out of the office and uh, everything is a cultural change, uh, including technology. So having providers at the table and engaging them early in that process is kind of a core value of mine when, when developing solutions in this space. And each organization is different. And so in my experience, a lot of the problems are the same. And that goes for a monster academic medical institution with you know hundreds if not thousands of employed providers mm -hmm. versus a 10-man independent group uh, in a rural market and the issues may be the same for example we both could struggle with patient access or both could struggle with how to appropriately staff or retain talent um, but the solutions for those groups are obviously drastically different mm -hmm. you know um, we've seen a lot more of uh, economies of scale strategy as groups have grown and um, health systems that maybe aren't traditionally in the business of, in, of running medical groups mm -hmm. keep acquiring these disparate practices. They end up with not so much a medical group, but a federation of independent yep. practices that carry the same flag, but don't do anything the same. And so I think a lot of places we go, uh, you know, dependent on size, it's just bringing consistency, identifying best practices that we know nationally applying them to the internal best practices, and then putting together some really 
specific targeted valuable solutions that that are sustainable Mm -hmm. for that organization yeah i think that's a good point because i think as we we talk a lot and coker does a lot around the alignment the transactions the integration or or kind of the pre-integration if Mm -hmm. you will and and systems and and physician groups are are still they're very various stages of that going on in different markets Mm -hmm. so some are just kind of diving into you know uh, acquiring practices and employing physicians. Others are, like you said, have been doing it for years and they have hundreds, if not even thousands of employed physicians in their network of all specialties, um, all kinds of arrangements and models. But um, we're definitely, regardless of where they are on the stage, I, I think the it, it, it definitely is consistent that we've gone through alignment or we're going through alignment. We haven't necessarily gotten to integration fully. Absolutely. And and clinical integration, I guess, means different things depending on the context of what you're talking about. But even just operational integration, mm-hmm. personnel, efficiencies. Uh, I mean, like you said, whether it's you know fi- on the finance side, on rev cycle, or if it's uh, sa- staffing and personnel, if it's I mean IT and and the um, technology integration and interoperability, uh, it's all over the board, I guess. Yeah, and I think a lot of it boils down to what you define as integration Mm -hmm. and is different by organization. And then what's, what the reality of that integration looks like. And so you go to some organizations, they say we're already operationally integrated or financially integrated. Mm -hmm. Now we want to move towards clinical integration, um, which has a myriad of definitions as well. Um, And so I think one understanding what you're trying to accomplish strategically. And then two, it's really hard to clinically integrate, which I'll define as tying costs to quality, mm-hmm. um, but without having oper- the foundational elements of operational integration in place. And in my time with advisor board worked with a lot of organizations to set up a, a formal clinically integrated network. Mm-hmm. And many of those organizations overestimated how, integrated they were operationally already yeah, absolutely. and um the the fun thing about integration and and all of this strategic work is that there are a lot of different options and so whether you want to stay independent as a small group or whether you want to find out uh how valuable you might be if you want to be acquired or if you're a large group looking to grow and you've got a competitive marketplace or if you're on top and you want to stay there yeah. uh, or you want to offload some of that expense. There's just a lot of different options to pursue. And it's challenging because you could be convinced of going in, in a lot of different directions. And I think um, one of the things that Coker has an advantage on is having done all that transactional work, um, you've seen the the guts of the deal and yeah. seen it for what it is um, before having to weigh in many times on what would be the optimal decision yeah. uh, moving forward. And so I'd like to I'm excited about the opportunity to marry some of that with what we do in, in, yeah. in our space and, and put it together. Well, I, I think that I, I would completely agree. I think that's where it is very interesting, it, it, meaning it, it's the nuance of each individual situation and organization and their respective scenarios that they're kind of dealing with. And, uh, and, and I can tell you how many times that I've worked with, say, on the hospital or health system side, and it's, you know, kind of varying perspectives on their ability to mm-hmm. uh, operate efficiently in the ambulatory space. We all know um, hospitals oftentimes have been really good at being hospitals. They're mm-hmm. not always great at being practices. But now that so many have kind of recognized that and they've confronted it, it's really opened up the the range of options. And then on the provider side, on the physician side, they're thinking about options. A lot of times the assumption is just kind of this well, if we go over to the hospital, it's employment and it's going to be, this is the compensation and this is how referrals are going to work. And it's going to be fairly straightforward. Um, and it's kind of selling out mentality, whereas it doesn't have to be like that. And we've found and been able to implement all kinds of arrangements that have allowed literally all the parties involved to accomplish those objectives like you alluded to in terms of what are the strategic objectives here uh, while still being able to maintain whether it's the independence they wanted to maintain or economics they wanted to, to maximize or whatever it may be um, there can be balance I guess and that's kind of the fun thing is getting into these unique scenarios and really figuring out what that is yeah absolutely and, and I think fear has been a powerful 
motivator and whether it's fear or defensive strategy. Yeah, good point. Uh, a, lot, a lot of organizations have been both on the independent provider side and the large health system side making decisions to prepare just in case mm-hmm. or in, you know, in the event that things turn south, do I have my bases covered on value-based care on a network of providers that are loyal to my hospital system? Um, and I think we're reaching a point now where we can stabilize some of the fear and be a little more proactive with the choices we're making mm-hmm. instead of spending money to uh, you know to buy insurance policies that may or may not actually yeah. uh, be be true insurance. That's so. great. That's a great point. I remember going back. This is probably ten years ago now, eight, nine, ten years, and and there was very much. It was kind of a, a mentality. It was like, well, you know, and. Five ten years, the the private medical practice will be gone as we know it. Type type mindset and, or assumption, and then on the hospital side, it was all right. If we're going into this game of buying practices, let's let's figure out what our loss per physician is going to be and how basically just to protect ourselves on downside. But you know, those are kind of two extremes, and what we found is neither one of those have to be the case. First right. of all, I don't think the private practice is going anywhere anytime. Um, has, is it evolving in a large way for many? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, um, but then on the other end, it doesn't have to be evolving in a bad way and that it doesn't have to be negative. Right. And I'm always amazed at how market dependent that is. Absolutely. Um, we go around the country and, you know, doing work in California, you'd assume that every physician in the world is employed by a large institution. Right. And then, uh, you end up in you know, Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm from, and you got a lot of doctors still with their sh- single shingle, um, partnerships and family practices and, uh, you name it. Um, it, it's a piecemeal. And yeah. so the strategy in those markets has to be completely different, but ultimately people are still concerned about a lot of the same things. Sure. You know, are we providing care in a timely manner? Or are we doing quality work? Are we prepared for the transition to value? Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, I think it's, it's all about developing unique solutions and doing the right thing for each of those organizations in their current situation and not just plugging and playing yeah. a, a strategy that's the flavor of the day. Yeah, well, I, I, that's a good point. And, and I'll say, you know, we, we always like to reiterate when on, on our podcast here that the purpose of this is never to go in and just, you know, try to <laughs> talk about Coker services and things like that and, and be all sales pitchy. But I'll say this, though, to that point, one of the good things here that I think differentiates us and I I think it's worth pointing out is the fact that we recognize there is no there is no single magic solution or silver bullet that addresses all different scenarios. Every case, really every client scenario, there, there are similarities and there are things that overlap and there are standards and best practices that can be pursued or followed. But every case is different. And, uh, and, and there's, it's not always, a, it doesn't always boil down to dollars and cents either. There are people involved here. There are, um, jobs, there are careers. Um, uh, most importantly, there are patients at the end of the day that the, the whole point behind all this is we're trying to improve quality and, and value has to be there at the same time. So, uh, I think that's a much more encouraging perspective to have rather than just kind of doom and gloom or, mm-hmm. you know, what are, what are they doing to is this time type mentality? Yeah, and um, I'm I'm freshly biased. I don't have a long term bias to to Coker, but what part of the advantage based on other places that I've been is just the size and the uh, the skill sets of the individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not teams of fifty um, who have to stay within a lane. It's people who have a breadth of experience who have worked in multiple areas of healthcare, RNs who are coders who also have an IT uh, mm-hmm. background, uh, things like that that really allow you to add value. And that's part of the reason I'm so happy to be here is yeah. just uh, being able to you know piggyback off that, learn from it, and then um, you know, really provide value in the market to clients that need it. No, I think that's right. And I, I'm, I'm obviously, as I said before, we're really excited to have you part of that uh, part of that framework. So um, you guys will be hearing more from Brant and uh, and we'll make sure his contact information is available and where to find him and all of that good stuff on the post for this uh, this episode. Um, I did want to quickly just again, as I alluded to earlier, provide a little bit of a teaser. So we are going to be talking to Brand again here in uh, in the next, I guess we'll call it a couple of weeks, maybe by the time it gets out there, a couple of months. But um, one, I think one of the things we're going to talk about or the main topic we're going to talk about in that episode where we'll go into more detail is patient access. 
So Brent, maybe just give us kind of the quick and dirty of what that means and what we're ultimately going to be doing in that episode. Sure. I mean, simply stated, patient access is a patient's ability to see the provider they want in a timely manner. Uh, complexly stated, it is all the things that you do and all Go every touch that. point that yeah. a health system or a practice uh, goes through to get a patient scheduled, to manage that patient in between visits and uh, manage provider schedules. Um, the provider engagement and consistency is a big piece of that. And a lot of organizations have, a, have energy around patient access. Uh, one of the things that I, I think we'll dig into is how you not only implement some sustainable change and solutions to that you can you can rely on but also monitor and measure that over mm-hmm. time and what kinds of data points are relevant to informing your decisions about patient access a lot of times we see um, you know your directors and managers and um, practice administrators flying blind when it comes to patient access we deal with patient complaints when they when we find out they can't get in or yeah. you know the brother-in-law yeah, calls the head yeah. physician and people are angry and so I think being having a proactive strategy and you said, not being reactive mm-hmm. to patient access um, and having the data and analytics to support you in that is, is something that um, we've had a lot of success doing and, and we can dig into deeper. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And needless to say, it's a it's something every organization needs Absolutely. of any size, scale, scope, any of that stuff. So uh, obviously very relevant. And that'll be fun to get down into a little bit more of the weeds on that topic because there are multiple moving parts to it, I'm Absolutely. sure. So. Well, that's great. Well, um, we will make sure to uh, provide those details uh, in the show notes for this episode and also Brant's contact information and, again, where to find him and all that stuff. And we'll make sure to keep you all posted on when that episode comes out. And uh, But until then, uh, feel free to reach out to Brant for any questions or reach out to us, as always, for questions. And we'll look forward to talking to you, Brant, in future episodes. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank all right. you very much. Thanks. Thanks for listening.